In this video, I will show you how I set up a full TouchFX project based on the STM32 and the ILI9488 3.5 inch display I handle with a library you can find on my GitHub page. I will start from the screen developing with TouchFX Designer going to the CubeMX configuration needs introduced by the complex transitions and widgets used. We will analyze some widgets and taking in consideration the features of the hardware we are using, we will see how to choose the best ones, the best TouchFX tools for our project. Then we will see how to set up the images coding inside the project and which coding we have to use, saving space into RAM and flash memory and speeding up the image processing or runtime. Finally, we will see how I develop coding related to screens, widgets and transitions and how I link TouchFX to the rest of the project, exchanging data to sensor, actuators and so on. So, this is the project I refer here. It's a programmable home thermostat. In the prototype set up for this video you see here, I cut off the interface to the heater and temperature sensor, keeping the logic, the function handling them in the project. In this video we will analyze the graphic user interface developing. Details about this hardware and how to handle it is out of the topic of this video. Main screen shows the current temperature on this text and on the color gauge. Then there is another gauge indicating the target temperature set, the program temperature. Main screen has two states. A standby status indicating the temperatures, the date and time, and the heater status, which is on if this icon is visible. Touching displays, it goes to an enabled status showing some buttons. After a timeout, it returns in standby. Program button goes to the page where I can set up the heater weekly plan. We will not analyze details in this page, as here about TouchFX I don't have anything more than what we can see on the setup page. Here I can define the current date and time and set the design background light level for both states, enable and standby. For instance I could set here a very low standby light level and back to the main screen waiting for the standby timeout. We will see the low light level. Let me set it back to a higher level for this video. You can see I have also a screen transition. Well, personally I don't like so much this kind of transitions. I prefer simple, plain screen changing. But I added it here to show that TouchFX allows to start long time and animation that autonomously develop over a long series of frames when started. Ok, I set back the backlay level to a high value for this video. We will return analyzing this long animation in a short time. Here you see I'm using a slider. That's a widget needing to handle dragging over the display. If you want to use my library, it has to be version 1.3 or above. If you have seen my previous videos, you know that in previous version of a library I was mainly using buttons in TouchFX. Another widget is here. Setting date and time. Touching date, I enable a scroll wheel where I can select the current weekday. Touching time, I enable the selection for hours and minutes. When I move to other widgets like the sliders or the button, the scroll wheel disables, setting date and times chosen. Clicking back button, you see the calendar showing the updated values. Still in the setup page, let me draw your attention to the widget I chosen. TouchFX provides a rich toolbox where the designer can find many alternative components. 
Moreover, you can develop specific widgets, your own widgets in the project. Selecting the right tool is important to get a good final result. Here, for instance, two similar widgets are available on an ILI9488. You can see that both widgets allow to select a weekday in a list. When selected, the value below the list is updated. Scroll list allows to make the selection with just a single wheel. You can scroll the list and click over the chosen item. Scroll wheel automatically selects the highlighted value, so I need to add a button to choose it, to confirm the choice. So, scroll list is more compact, because it doesn't need a button. You can click over a wheel, confirming your selection. But here, we are working with a small display and a resistive touch sensor. It's hard for touch effects distinguish between a selection touch by a small dragging. With the result of an not easy user interface. So, I decided to adopt a scroll wheels. Obviously, these are personal considerations. You have to test the resolution offered by TouchFX and select what is the best fitting your needs. Again about widget, you see I can overlap many of them to get the function I need. Here on the main screen I have a solid color background, a gauge background picture, a gauge showing the current temperature. A second gauge showing a needle indicating the target temperature. And above that, a text indicating the current temperature. Finally, buttons activating some functions when needed. Let's consider now all of these images involving the TouchFX widgets. Let's see the image coding and its memory occupation. When we create a blank project with an RGB Fexis file display, that's the configuration we are using now, TouchFX Designer set the default configuration using RGB Fexis file for images without transparencies and ARGB8888 for images with transparencies. As shown on support.touchfx.com website, RGB Fexis file needs 2 bytes per pixel and ARGB8888 needs 4 bytes per pixel. Here we can see also that TouchFX can handle also L8 RGB Fexis 5 and L8 ARGB8888, both of them needing 1 byte per pixel. The limit introduced by these formats is that they can handle images with only 256 color within the original palette. But that normally is not a big limit, as graphics images normally use only a small range of colors. Let's try to see what this means in a project. In a blank screen, I set a solid color background. Let's say blue. Above that, I add a picture. I get a clock background from the image stock of TouchFX. It has transparencies. You see the picture corners showing the ground. Let's save the project, compile it, and see the memory occupation. Picture was saved in the default format, ARGB8888, and the occupation is 225 kilobytes. Now I change its format. to L8 ARGB8888. The result is that the occupation is 56 kilobytes. There is also a second file with a size of about 1 kilobyte. It stores the color lookup table of a picture. For more information about this color format, please refer to the documentation in the video description. 
But here, I don't really need transparencies. I know the color I will use as background. So I could create a full color picture. I use GIMP handling images. So I load the clock picture. And add a background using the same color of my project background. And save it. In TouchFX Designer, now I load my picture. You see it's a full color picture, but with the same result on the project. Touch Effect Designer will save the picture as RGB565. Needing 112 kilobytes. And saving it as L8 RGB565. I get a size of 56 kilobyte, again with a color cap table. This table collects all the sizes we had for the pictures. There is one more advantage storing images without transparencies. Using ARGB8888, TouchFX has to convert images to RGB565 required by the display any time it has to update the screen. Using a full color RGB565, TouchFX will just transfer a picture to the display without needing conversion, with benefits in terms of performance. So in my projects, I set as default the L8 version of the color formats. And only when this color coding cannot convert a picture having more than 256 colors in the same file, I try to avoid transparencies, going to use RGB faxes 5. This is the case, for instance, of a temperature gauge arc. It is full of colors, and trying to save it with a L8 color format, the GFX designer gives an error. So I remove any transparencies to the picture and coded it as RGB faxes 5. Let's see now the changes we need in CubeMX setup handling animations. We have seen that I have here in TouchFX some animated widget and long transitions. This animation need that TouchFX generates and transfer to the display a long series of frames. To achieve this, I cannot just use touch detection to activate frame updating. And usually TouchFX uses Vusync signal from the display as a tick timer for this sequence of frames. Vsync is a signal provided by the display driver and it is usually intended for synchronization between the graphic system TouchFX and the display to ensure that the frame transfer is properly aligned with the display update, avoiding visual artifacts like tearing effects. The display driver generates Vsync signal usually 60 times per second. But TouchFX uses it also as a time base for reanimation. So, using only buttons in TouchFX, I can avoid to provide this time base. But using complex widgets or animations, TouchFX needs it.
Display drivers like the ILI 9048 or 9341 and even the ST7735 generate these signals, but it is not made available by the boards we are using here. If you want to have some practice with the Vsync signal generated by the display, you can use the X-Nucleo GFX boards. They are using the same ST7735 or the ILI display drivers, but making available the Vsync signal on the board pins. These boards, instead, don't provide it, and needing anyway touch GFX a time-based signal handling animations, we can provide it through a timer. This is the microcontroller setting in CubeMX. You can see it is already set with the display handling and with the TouchFX package configuration. I already shown this setup in my previous video, so I will not repeat here uselessly spending your time. So, as I said, handling animation, I have to set up a timer. I just need a basic timer like Team 6 or Team 7 providing just an interrupt call every counting period. But here, there are no basic timer available on F411, so I will use the Team 3 General Purpose Timer. For more information about types of timer, their features and availability on the STM32 family, you can refer to the AN4013 application note, available on the ST website. Back to the F411 configuration, I have it working at 100 MHz, so I said ARR and PSC in order to get a timer period of 60 cycles per second. Then in QBID, I will set up a period elapsed callback that will just call touch signal voicing function that we already know activates TouchFX engine. So about the timers in this project, I have here Team 2 set for the PWN signal controlling the display backlight and Team 3 handling the TouchFX activation. I have also enabled the RTC simply to have the calendar available handling the weekly heater program. About CubeID, before entering in details of the developing, let's recap the designer project organization. It is based on three screens, main, setup screen and program. These screens uses a series of containers. Some of them are required by the widget used. Some others group widgets in a single element for an easier handling. In CubeID, we can see that under TouchFX folder, GUI, source and header folders, we have a folder for each screen, main, setup and program. Then there is a container folder, having a file for each container in the project. The same structure is in GUI generated folder. As the name let understand, GUI generated folder is handled by TouchFX and we can't change the code inside that folder. But we can look inside that, understanding how TouchFX works. For instance, you have seen on the main screen these two up and down buttons. They allow a quick program override. We can have a temporary program change in case of need.
these two buttons have a name button temp up and button temp down and have an interaction defined temp up fn and temp down fn virtual function in cube ide we can see into gui generated main screen main view base dot cpp There is a callback handle function receiving a parameter indicating the button pressed and calling the tempdown fn or tempdown fn functions on the corresponding button. All of this is done by TouchFX and we have to develop these two functions. That must be declared here in mainview.hpp this way. and must be defined here in mainview.cpp. It will increase or decrease of half a Celsius degree the program temperature. This way I will define the behaviors of the screen and its widgets. Let's see another example. Main screen has to update the information shown when changing. If heater turns on or off, if temperature changes, or just changing the clock values. To do that, I have to set up an interaction triggered by the tick counter. In the interaction parameters, I can set how often it must be called, the number of ticks between two calls and here it is set every single tick, that means 60 times per second. Virtual function name is tick main fn. Then I go again to the mainview.hpp declaring it and in the .cpp file defining its content. I'll go checking if button have to be set visible or invisible as per display status and I'll check changes in clock, heater and temperature. Updating gauge and text. So, some widgets, like buttons or sliders, provide an interaction we can see on the designer. Some others directly provide a callback function for the widget events. Finally, there are many events for each screen. A setup screen called entering to the screen and a teardown screen called exiting. Again, detailed information on support.tagfx.com. So, for every external event that has to be monitored by TouchFX, I set up outside it two functions. A changed event function 
change the clock, change the heater, change the temp, and so on, polling event and verifying if the value changed, and a get event function returning the value. This way you see in TouchFX I go polling the various events to monitor and start updating widgets if changed, just calling the related function. Outside TouchFX I will implement the handling of the physical object. When the object can be set by TouchFX, I implement also a setValue function, registering the values received by TouchFX. We can see here the function related to the clock. Change the clock function, pause the clock, and store in a static variable the clock minute value. If the value changes since the previous call, it returns 1, otherwise 0. Get clock handles RTC and returns the clock value. Set clock receives values from TouchFX and update RTC. So, when I'm developing GUI through TouchFX, I just take care of the graphics element, just using this function querying data. Then, outside TouchFX, I handle the rest of the project, providing these interface functions. I feel comfortable working this way and I think useful sharing this software organization. Having done all of these changes to the TouchFX project, also my main function has to be updated. Referring to the previous videos, I will not call now TouchSignalVSync because it is handled by the timer. I will instead start the timer before entering into the main loop. Again, inside the main loop, I will not anymore call touch signal VSync. I will instead handle the processes, devices and peripherals. Here you see also the display backlight is handled as a device outside TouchFX. I monitor here the heater program progress. And then, consequently, I handle here the command turning on and off the heater, handling here the needed logic, using hysteresis or a more complex PID algorithm if needed. So this is how I handle graphics in my projects with these small displays. If I have a heavy job for a microcontroller, I go directly driving a simple graphic on the display. If a microcontroller has enough power, enough time handling graphics, I set up a TouchFX project, mainly using buttons. That allows me having good graphics results with a low impact of the overall performances. And only if I have to handle slow processes, I will go using heavier TouchFX projects with complex widgets and transitions. This is the case of a home thermostat. Even if handling graphics I have a delayed response to the external events, that will not compromise the process handling that has a very slow develop. Ok, as always, I hope I shown something useful for your project. Thank you for watching. See you to the next video. Bye.